Action. He was a high profile figure, so his activities were being monitored. And I think they wanted me to know to scare me, and I was scared, paranoid. He believed all of his telephone conversations were being monitored. He believed that he was being followed around New York City. He believed that friends that he thought were friends were secret informants for different intelligence communities. We were just shocked, and we were really scared. The Beatles made a statement in all the newspapers that they're getting more better than uh, Jesus himself. Well, originally, I was, I was pointed out that fact in reference to England, that we meant more to kids than Jesus did, or religion at that time. I wasn't knocking it or putting it down, I was just saying it. I think simply uh, on the basis of statistics and fact, uh, his statement is untrue. Well, no one is more popular than Jesus. I just didn't mean what everybody thinks I meant, you know. I'm not anti-Christ or anti-religion or anti-God, you know. So many people have built buildings in the name of Christ, and what have people done for the Beatles? What have they done for us? I'm not saying that we're better or greater or comparing us with Jesus Christ as a person or God as a thing or whatever it is. You know, I just said what I said and it was wrong or was taken wrong and now it's all this. With boys over if you want it, I said, OK, let's do posters. And then John said, uh, no, let's do billboards as well in all the different cities in the world. Wow. I mean, he was like that because his arena of communication was much larger than mine. So he thought of that. It's in 11 cities throughout the world. That's New York, LA, Montreal, Toronto, Paris, Berlin, Rome, London, Athens, and Tokyo. And with a bit of luck, Port of Spain, uh, in the Caribbean, because we met a friend there who said he'd fix it, you know. John was no dummy. He knew that people would regard him as being a nutcase. Right? He didn't care. He thought that whatever people thought about him was unimportant compared to the cause he was promoting. If I'm going to get on the front page, I might as well get on the front page with the word peace. But you've made yourself ridiculous. To some people, I don't care. If it, You're too good for if it what saves you're doing. lives... You don't think you... Oh, my dear boy, you're living in a nether nether. Well, uh, you talk to them. You her. don't think you saved a single life. Uh, listen, uh, will way. you tell me, what were they singing at the moratorium? Which, which, I mean, the moratorium, the, the, it just threw out the, the nation. The one here, the, the, the recent big one, they were singing Give Me a Chance, you know. A song of yours, probably. Uh, well, yes, and it was written specifically out. for them. So they sang one of your songs. Well, if you Great can, song, if you can, sure, but is that all you can say about that? The moratorium? You were saying that in America they're so serious about the protest movement. Yes, they are. But they were so flippant that they were singing a happy-go-lucky song, which happens to be one I wrote. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad they sang it. And when I get there, I'll sing it with them. It's great that you came in the rain. And I read somewhere that the war movement was over. <laughs> we're here to bring the boys home. But let's not forget the machines. Bring the machines home. And then we really get somewhere. The people are the only people that can do it. It wasn't so much that Lenin was being critical of US policy. It's that he was over here enjoying all the benefits of the success that we were giving him, the wealth, the, you know, all the rest of it, and bad-mouthing us here. Our attitude was, you want to do that? Go back to London, go back to Liverpool. Mm -hmm.